Cundavani back down as far as McLaughlin. And a nice easy point taken there by Kevin McLaughlin. Two points for him. Yeah, that's a well taken score. Fair play to Conroy, kept the ball in play, and McLaughlin just composed himself sufficiently to get around Anthony Thompson and put it over the bar. But it's, you know, the previous three attacks from a Mayo, or from a Mayo point of view came to nothing. You know, aimless kind of balls in, and they need to be much more cohesive inside if they are to penetrate that Donegal defence. Well, McLaughlin's been the brightest of their attackers so far. about nine minutes to go to half time Aidan O'Shea jumping catching really well great piece of fielding referee gives him a free kick once the male of the Donegal players back and now the referee brings the ball forward 30 meters and it'll be Alan Dillon who will take it Alan Dillon has been one of the great leaders of Mayo football over the last 10 years that was in for Conroy he could hope for was a throw ball but the referee saw the ball handled on the ground anyway and Mark McHugh was the last man up with it so it's uh, going to be a free kick yes yeah, great covering by Mark McHugh once again there's a trigger to it there's athleticism his ability to read the game but, oh! that was very nearly gifted to Mayo but for a bit of vigilance on the part of the Donegal backs and they were lucky I thought the hexing them I'm afraid <laughs> Carol Lacey, as far as Ryan Bradley, on here as far as Frank McGlynn, has a support player outside of it's the other corner back, Paddy McGrath, turned back once again here towards Neil Gallagher, oh, it's a terrible ball, maybe Danny Goler just being lured into complacency here as Ender Varley has it, mistakes by Danny Goal and Mayo are the ones who are the beneficiaries. Yeah, the quality of the kick pass that time from Lee Keegan was wonderful. Beautiful crossfield ball, well caught by Varley, takes on his man, draws the free, gives Mayo an opportunity to cut into the lead once more. Well, this ball here was uh, oh so dangerous, and Paul Durkin did really well to kick it away. You remember in the league semi final with Kieran Donne, he did yep. something similar, and Alan Dillon intercepted it, which resulted, I think, in a Mayo goal. It'll be Killian O'Connor who will take it. He's pointed one from a free already. 25 metres or so out from the target. Usually a player who kicks the ball exceptionally well. 18 pointed frees out of 24 already in this year's championship. And this is one Mayo need, and he is the provider. So it's two for O'Connor, the Ballantubber player. And now it's two, three to four points, and the gap is back to five. Yeah, they will be very happy with that, Ger, because they have come back from the, the gates of hell, so to speak, and around the middle of the field now they're starting to get a little bit of a grip. Aiden O'Shea has caught a good ball, Barry Moore has broken one or two on Neil Gallagher, and now maybe they're getting into the rhythm somehow. But those two goals from Michael Murphy and Colin McFadden, three minutes and 11 minutes on the clock, they are the most telling scores so far. As it's kicked out into the middle here, and it's won back by Mayo, and then... The loose ball swiftly picked up here by Donegal once more, and uh, it's Mark McHugh back there doing the spade work. His dad, of course, Martin, played 20 years ago against Dublin in the 1992 final, scored three points in that match. James kicking it long, or rather Mark kicking it long, intended for Michael Murphy. Instead, it is Jerk Africa who's now gone into a marking job. Line ball's going to be to Mayo. Linesman over there is David Coldrick. Donald Vaughan kicking it all the way back to his goalkeeper to adjust his footing there, David Clark. Aidan O'Shea. They have taken a long, long time to settle in this match. But they're still in the hunt. Kevin McLaughlin. Keegan threading it forward towards Conroy. Swiftly across comes Neil McGee. Well, it's some ten minutes now since Donny Gold's last score. Meanwhile, Aidan O'Shea on the attack from Mayo. Varley steps away from trouble and then good little interception there by Leo McClune, but the referee says it was an illegal one. Free kick quickly taken. Lots of spare players back there for Donny Gold. One of them, Frank McGlynn, just making sure that the danger is snuffed out immediately.
Neil Gallagher. Resolutely carrying it forward here, helped by Emma McGee. Carroll makes his way up there, up joining the attack. This is something that Donegal do, of course, bring their half-backs forward on occasions, looking for breaks. Mayo trying to cover the gaps. Dillon inside here, taking a return ball. Kicks it well. Comes back down off the post to Michael Conroy and he loses it. And inevitably, Mark McHugh once again back with the referee saw a push this time and he's given a free kick against Donegal. Much to the annoyance of the Donegal followers. Yeah, I think it's of the soft variety, it must be said. The ball came off the post that time. It's a 50-50 tussle, I think, between the two of them. No point in ar arguing with Morris Deegan. He has given the decision. Dylan takes a shot from outside. Just watch it, it hits the post, comes down. It looked to me a 50-50 contest, but the referee has given Mayo the opportunity to narrow the lead. Thought there might have been a free much earlier on at the time when we had uh, yellow cards issued to Killian O'Connor and to Eamon McGee, but they get the free kick belatedly anyway, much, much later, and it's going to be Killian O'Connor who will take it, and this can now make it a four-point game after a dreadful start. Into the wind on a swirling day at Croke Park. Killian O'Connor kicking across left to right, and straight between the posts in the end. Three points for him, all from freeze, to go with Kevin McLaughlin's two points from play. That makes up Mayo's five, and it's now two, three to five points, or nine points to five. Yeah, and credit Mayo for the way they've come back into the game. And notice where Michael Murphy is playing out at the moment, around the middle of the field. They've got quite disjointed out in that sector at the moment, have done a A lot of the deliveries inside are being intercepted now by the Mayo defence, who have started maybe to read the situation a bit better. Well, Mayo will have the breeze for the second 35 minutes, but then the win never won an All-Ireland final, it never will. This is Colin Boyle, pursued by Leo McLoon. Referee saw the foul, quickly taken. Good work here by Michael Conroy. He's working across that line from right to left, and he's keeping Neil McGee on his toes, and he's getting in timely shots like that, and he's put it over the bar. And it's a very good point by Michael Conroy, who came off the bench in 2004 in that final against Kerry. He was wearing number 30 that day. He was only 19. He came on and he got a goal and a point. He's got a point here, and the gap's down to three, and there are two minutes to go to half-time. Yeah, credit Barry more than that time, the way he broke the ball away from McGee, and Boyle picked up the break, gave it to Conroy, and Conroy's confidence was manifest. Fine score. Mark McHugh now, with Rory Kavanagh kicking it forward. In there as far as McBriarty. It's lost, turned over, and it's... Mayo are working hard now, really working incredibly hard, getting themselves back into this match, showing the necessary industry. That's nicely up there towards Killian O'Connor. He has to battle for it, try to keep it in play. Thompson gets onto it for Danny Gold, surrounded and held, and it's going to be a free for the Ulster champions. It's taken by Eamon McGee, close to half time. Here comes Ryan Bradley. Remember, it's. Uh, a Donegal side that had a very nice handy lead at one stage. They had uh, two goals and a point in front after 11 minutes at seven points up. Carol Lacey. In as far as Murphy. Intended there for Gallagher. Donegal player on the ground, referee busily keeping an eye on the uh, stricken players. And it's got to be a free kick. Yeah, Colm O'Boyle this time, I think, is the one that's going. Certainly a late uh, tackle that time by Donald Vaughan. That's what it was called for. OK, the high tackle maybe from Colm Boyle, but originally I think the free was for this one here. The late tackle by Donald Vaughan on Carl Lacey. And once again, the decibel level rises here, and the referee has now gone down to have words with Donald Vaughan, and he's going to get a yellow card as well, I imagine. So that will make it four male players yellow carded in the first half against one from Donegal. We're in stoppage time. Chance now for uh, Donegal to add to their lead. It's been whittled down to three, where once it was seven. 
So two minutes of added time being played. And the free taker will be Colin McFadden once again, the 29-year-old teacher, teaches at St. Eunan's College. And I'm told that today is the feast of St. Eunan, who is uh, Donegal's patron saint. Smiling down, I'm sure, on the Donegal charges. McFadden last scored in the 20th minute, so 15 minutes on from that. Can he get another score here? And a late, late point for Donegal before the break. Referee having a word or two with players out of picture. Shutting there with Anthony Thompson. Meanwhile, all eyes on Colin McFadden. Can this go over? Can this extend Donegal's lead? The answer, yes. A very emphatic yes. And he's got a goal and three in this first half. Wonderful performance by the number 15. And so four between them once again. Yes, and it's their first score, actually, I think, in 16 minutes, which gives a good indication of the way that Mayo have come into the game. Mayo's spirit kicked in, character showed in their, in their play as the half went on, because that was an appalling start that they had. Last few seconds, then, of this first half of the All-Ireland Football Final 2012. Dole Bottom setting off once again. This time it's carried on by Jason Doherty. They need a big input from him. Higgins up there, an opportunity maybe. Donald Vaughan recycled once again. Back it comes here towards end of Barley, kicking and kicking under pressure and cooking over the bar. End of Barley gets his first point of the All Ireland final, and once again it's back to a three-point game. And Mayo, who made the most awful start to this All Ireland final, are right back in the mix once again. We've played the two minutes of uh, added time and the referee I imagine will get the whistle to his lips very very shortly now once this is kicked out by Paul Durkin and it's half time in the All-Ireland Football Final 2012 Killian O'Connor got three points for Mayo all of them from freeze but Donegal made the most wonderful of starts a goal after three minutes by Michael Murphy then another goal by Colin McFadden after 11. And you may remember Colin McFadden had a very good chance of getting a third, but for the intervention of goalkeeper David Clark. But to their credit, Mayo playing against the wind have battled back strongly. They've forced their way back into this game, even though they haven't been dominating the exchanges around midfield. And at half time in the All Ireland final, it's Donegal who lead. Donegal, two goals and four points. Mayo, seven points. Analysis coming up right after this. Michael, yes, 35 minutes from realizing their life's ambitions. No changes made by either management team. As far as we can see, before we start this second half, only three between them. Match being watched all around the world. Wherever you are watching it, we hope you're enjoying the contest. And I'm sure Edel Cawley, if 